This is Witchspace News for Friday the 4th of October 2019 I'm Commander Burr. In this weeks news September patch 2 hits the servers Could cross platform play be coming to Elite? Commander Plater's 24 hour charity livestream smashes through its target and we'll also have a liberal sprinkling of community news that's caught our eye this week. Remember to hit like and subscribe and click the little bell icon to get a notification next time we upload a new video. You can also come and join us on the Burr Pit Discord server where we organise all our community events and if you want to help support the work of this channel you'll also find us on Patreon. Links to everything you need are in the description below. As promised late last week Frontier released September patch 2 to the game. The patch comes with quite an array of crash and stability fixes as well as some less serious glitches and oddities affecting the main game as well as the new starter experience. Again as promised the almost universally disliked station menu blue store icon is now a much more in game orange and has been moved one slot to the right making it a whole lot less in your face causing the collective forehead blood vessels of the community to also be a lot less visible. It's lovely that Frontier clearly listened to that collective cry from the community and took swift action to remedy it despite there being the obvious commercial pressures behind its appearance. There are still some bugs off the back of the September update and there's rumblings that some new ones might have crept in off the back of this latest patch so there's every chance we could be getting a patch 3 sometime soon. PlayStation behemoth Sony kind of announced this week that their year long beta test of cross platform play has come to an end and that that functionality is now available to all developers to use as they see fit. Cross platform play that sees gamers playing together regardless of the platform that they play on has been a creeping desire over the last few years in the gaming world in general let alone Elite Dangerous. And of the three major platform holders Microsoft made probably the most positive noises about cross platform play of late announcing at this years games developer conference back in February that it was now a thing and the Nintendo Switch has been edging into cross play pretty much since its inception. Without all three of the major platform holders being fully on board with the cross play initiative Development for it is a tough sell for a developer financially but now that Sony has finally dragged its heels into the ring that does kick the doors open somewhat. So can we expect to see crossplay in Elite anytime soon? The short answer is nobody except Frontier knows that however it would make sense for them. They have an interconnected universe already as the background simulation goes across platforms and doesn't care what flavour of controller you have in your hands. It's just the nuts and bolts of flying a spaceship that has been closed to them up till this point. The prospect of multi crewing a turret from a tablet device on your sofa or finally flying in a wing with some of our very good community friends on Xbox and PlayStation is almost too exciting to vocalise. So is crossplay coming to Elite? If it is then there's every chance that Frontier would have known about it for some significant time and would have been developing it on the quiet or at least making allowances for it. I certainly think it fits the Elite and Frontier ethos they are after all a platform agnostic independent developer and publisher. You could argue that if they were planning on such a colossal overhaul of the underlying network code of something like Elite then it wouldn't make a huge amount of commercial sense to continue to fix and overhaul the existing network code in full and clear knowledge that that work was going to be lost in so many months time. You could therefore postulate great word postulate that that is possibly why we haven't seen some of the quirks of instancing, multi crew, hacks or cheats fully squashed yet. That is of course utter guesswork. Wouldn't it be a nice surprise for December or 2020 though? Commander Plater's third annual 24 hour charity livestream dominated the elite community sphere last weekend and was a roaring smashing success. The commander was raising money for the British Thyroid Foundation with a series of 2 hour challenges set by elite community content creators. The stream kicked off at midday UK time with Commander Plater being led a merry dance around the bubble by the team here at the Burr Pit. Across the following 24 hours he was joined by Commander Harry Potter, 
Yamix, Frontier Developments, Drew Wager, Tado Chip, Down to Earth Astronomy, Spatula, Ghost Giraffe, Mini and Exegius and finished the stream as the sun came round our blue marble again with an SRV race with Ascorbius, Turgeon, Grey Test and Machine. Over the course of the 24 hours he raised a staggering £8,291, a full 414% of his original £2000 target. It was a stunning, staggering, hilarious, surprising, worthy and heartwarming event. There's still time for you to donate to what is a very worthwhile charity. The Just Giving link is in the description below this video. If you're able to even donate just a pound that can make a huge difference to someone's life. And finally here's some stuff from the community that's caught our eye this week. Our very own expedition the pit trip got underway last Sunday night kicking off with a meet up and mass jump from the Tawanta system on the first leg of the expedition out to Betelgeuse and the Spirograph Nebula. Burpit community regular and Sagittarius Eye video jockey Commander Eagle131 put together a stunning video that left us with our collective jaws on the floor here at the pit. Do give it a look, a like and maybe drop the good commander a sub. Chances are you'll see a lot more pit trip footage there in the coming weeks. On the subject of expeditions the Fatherhood's Lost Souls Expedition 2 is forming up and accepting registrations at the moment. The expedition is leaving on October the 26th for a Christmas stopover in Colonia before heading out again to its final destination in April next year. I was part of the original Lost Souls expedition last year suffice to say it was an amazing trip with an amazing community taking in some stunning elite vistas. This expedition is likely to be just as engaging and comes highly recommended if you're hungry for more deep black. A brilliant piece of fan art surfaced on Reddit this week showing off what an atmosphere capable SRV could look like. Off the back of the post Reddit has busied itself hotly debating whether or not it's a 4x4 or an 8x8. And finally Frontiers product manager for Elite Dangerous and pilot of the famous pink wafer cobra Sally Morgan Moore announced that she is leaving Frontier for pastures new on October the 7th. A community and livestream regular Sally has been a very bright light in the team at Frontier and leaves behind some not insignificant shoes to step into. You will be sorely missed by everyone here at the pit Sally and we wish you nothing but good things in your onward journey. Thank you for everything you've done for us and the elite community and an extra special thank you from Commander Rini for the development of the camera suite. Oh floopin 7. That's it for now. Thanks very much for watching. We'll be back later this week with more videos. Until then O7 CMDRs follow the greens on the way out and do keep clear of the toast rack. We very much look forward to seeing you next time. 